technology, automation, and efficiency. Three things that us nerds get a little bit more excited about than your average person. I mean, who doesn't love a good spreadsheet? That's the stuff. Nowadays, in the name of efficiency, our technology is even trying to anticipate what we want it to do before we even really know what it is we want it to do. From our cars to our phones, everything is just trying to be more automated. There's one realm, though, where this can make a pretty big impact on your daily life, and up until now hasn't quite been ready for us to check out, and that's home automation. Companies have been scrambling for a while now to make smart versions of their lights, appliances, etc. All leading up to the possibility that your coffee machine can start itself when you wake up. Uh, your door can automatically open when you get home. You can play the Imperial March from Star Wars on your speaker when your wife gets home. You know, important things. The issue up until now has been that all these different products each require their own apps to control them. Um, making them, well, not as smart as they could be. But that is now beginning to change. With two appliance communication standards, Zigbee and Z-Wave, being adopted by most companies, we now finally have a way for all of them to talk to each other. The first thing you need to do is buy a hub. So this is kind of the brains of the outfit, and once it is connected to your wireless network via the ethernet cable and plugged into your router, it allows everything in the house to, well, talk to everything else in the house. The one I'm using is from a company called SmartThings, and you can find the link below to this one. Um, but one of the big benefits of it is that it speaks both Z-Wave and Zigbee protocols. Normally, you would have to have all of the devices in your house be either Z-Wave or Zigbee in order for them to be able to talk to each other. But with one like this that speaks both, you can actually mix and match. After that's set up, you're going to download the Hubs app to your phone and follow the prompts to connect it to your hub. Once you're connected through the app, you're going to want to get some sensors to get fancy with the automation. Sensors are smart devices that check to see if certain conditions are met and then pass that information along to the hub that you can then use to trigger certain actions. This closed and open sensor, for example, checks whether this door is closed or open. And then you can perform actions based on the fact of whether it is closed or open. There are a ton of these, and they can range from being something simple like an open and closed sensor to moisture sensors and to even presence sensors that can tell you uh, where your children or pets are. I suggest buying a few simple ones, which I've linked to below, uh, to get started. And once you kind of get the hang of those and then you start to realize what needs you have, uh, you can then purchase other ones and add them to your system later. To set up a new sensor, simply open the Hub app on your phone, uh, tap Add New Device, and it should automatically find the new sensor. Tapping it then will add it to your system. Next, we're gonna wanna buy some smart products. These are the things that perform actions whenever a trigger, including input from one of those sensors, is met. Again, I have a list below for a bunch that you could check out, but they range from things like door locks, to lights, to speakers, to even power outlets that you can turn on and off remotely, and anything that's plugged in will turn on and off. As with the sensors, make sure that it's Z-Wave or Zigbee compatible, and it should work. Also, as with the sensors, once you have your product, you can connect it to the hub using the same way that you did the sensor. Now, test it out. Open your Hub app and tap on an action you'd like it to do, and then you should be presented with a list of the different actions that that product can do, and then you can also use things like the sensor or the time to set them off. Now perform the trigger and see if the action happened. If it did, you're all set. Now you can just kind of repeat the process with as many items as you like. Uh, keep in mind that most Hubs have a 200 item limit, so try not to go over that for now. Another cool thing you should check out is IFTTT, or If This Then That. If you've never heard of it, I probably just ruined your weekend, but it is an app or a website that allows other apps to communicate with each other and perform automated tasks. You simply sign up for a free account at ifttt.com or through the app uh, and then set up channels. One of the channels being maybe smart things, the other one maybe being Nest. Uh, and then you'll be able to do things like have Nest automatically warm the house when you're on your way home, or, you know, because IFTTT has weather, you can have the lights turn on exactly at sunset, or even have the sprinklers outside not turn on because it's raining. Even TV shows are getting in on the action, like 12 Monkeys, the new show on the Sci-Fi channel. If you have Philips Hue lights, uh, you can actually set up your phone so that when the scene in 12 Monkeys changes, the lights in your living room change along with it. I know, 
right? The real fun with all of this, of course, is coming up with the innumerable ways that you can make all of these things interact. And of course, as more and more of these devices are coming out on the market, there are more and more possibilities. It's endless. I'm still waiting for the day when my bed tilts me up and puts me onto a conveyor belt and then my teeth are brushed by a robotic arm and I go through a car wash-like shower only to be blow-dried, dressed, and handed a coffee on my way out like the Jetsons. Oh, it's coming. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and if you did, please thumbs up it or share the video. It's greatly appreciated. Um, and if you guys have any ideas of really cool ways to use these home automation systems, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.